photography has given me power, the power to stand up, first to myself. My devotion to photography gave me and my family means, financially, socially, and educationally, to move forward, to stand on our own feet without any social assistance. I can't ignore the lives those around me. I started to use my art to channel the rage, the shame, and anger I felt. Now I use my photography to voice for others, using my camera as a weapon to capture and express inequalities. In today's story, I am the voice of our brothers and sisters. Their neglected lives push me to search for dignity and justice to tell you the untold story of conservancy workers, to seek acknowledgement and respect for them. The workers are employed by Bruhan Mumbai Municipal Corporation to collect the endless filth we create. We call them sweepers. The 39,000 men and women collect 10,000 metric tons of garbage every day to keep our city clean and free from diseases like cholera, typhoid, and the plague. But at what cost to their own health? This is Parmar. It takes him 20 hard strokes to sweep one step of the overhead bridge. He begins and finishes his work even before our city wakes up. The garbage is then loaded onto the trucks. While some trucks have been mechanized, today much is still done by hand. The cell phones have reached in their hands, but sanitation technology has not. The tools of the trade are primitive and limited, so the body is put to work, hands pick it up, shoulders carry it. There are angry scars where the wooden pole digs into Jadav's shoulder. The kind of garbage that workers handle us include animal carcasses, medical waste, steels, pipes, broken glass, you name it and everything is there. The list is endless. Can you imagine breathing in this trash every day? This is Manik. He reports to work at 6 a.m. At 11 a.m., he goes to one gully which has cleaned for last 15 years. In this gully, he has had everything flung on him, including boiling rice water. Once a sanitary napkin landed on him, his co-worker used her broom to wipe the blood off his face. But they did not stop cleaning the gully. It has to be clean. Our city's garbage is then transferred to the dumping ground, which have reached their capacity years back. The trucks which keep coming and coming have to be unloaded, no matter what, rain or shine. Descending into manholes and cleaning drainage lines is a special kind of horror. Some of the drainage lines are deep enough to accommodate a double-decker bus. Once inside, there is nothing but darkness. Totally cut off from the world above, anything could happen. He could pass out inhaling some toxic gas, sleep in a slime, lose consciousness. His dead body may surface or it may be washed away into the sea. Yes, it is true that this job requires no special skills, only a pair of arms, legs, but the courage to descend into living hell. All of this makes him feel hopeless about themselves. A law was passed in the year 2013 which made manual cleaning of sewers without protective gear a crime, but hardly anybody uses them. It is not practical and can be life-threatening. I know one case where three workers died of inhaling toxic gas. In fact, in our city, 21 workers die every month. Let us have a moment of silence to acknowledge all these deaths. The despair in their life continues. Housing in Mumbai is very expensive. So one of the perks of the job is getting a coli or a house. Dilapidated, dark, with limited water supply, homes in this building are truly precious. Two workers given one room is not unusual. These two family living in 10 feet by 12 feet room. A line drawn on the ground demarcates each family's territory. Fighting between families is very common and can last for years. I have no families who has not spoken to each, with each other for eight years. Workers are seen taking quick shots of alcohol at 6 a.m. before the day begins. One worker said to me, alcohol closes our thinking. We forget everything and ready for anything. Nothing hurts us anymore. Regularly intoxicated, alcohol causes them to be abusive, to take up large loans and often die early. 
This is Hiraman. Hiraman is visibly shrinking. With no health benefit associated with this job, he will soon die, making his wife a widow. Our city will consider his widow a pity case and give her Hiraman's job. It will then pass on to her children, father to wife, son to their wives, to their sons. It's a vicious circle of life, generation after generation. Remarriage is out of question. It will leave her jobless and homeless. Her single status of a widow makes her extremely vulnerable and an easy target for sexual harassment. That's why she continues to wear the mark of marriage. Imagine doing this for 20 years without any honors. Imagine the numbness required to do such a demeaning, degrading, and dehumanizing work. In fact, 39,000 human beings do. The men and women lose their dignity every day, bit by bit, until none is left. Workers begin to see themselves as garbage, worthy of nothing, not even a little respect. Many workers said to me, forget about us, but please do something for our children. They must not do the work in the same way we have done it. Reduce the garbage, make it modern, more human methods. These men and women are soldiers of our city. They fight us for every day. Without this workforce, life in our city will be overrun with ill health or worse. They deserve our respect, a smile, a namaste, an acknowledging gesture is a start. This story is to push you to rethink who the workers are, revalue what they do for you, and reconsider what all of us can do for them.